fast-moving developments as tensions mount over Russia's military buildup along Ukraine's border. Tonight, President Biden now putting 8,500 U.S. troops on, quote, heightened alert, ready for rapid deployment to potentially support NATO forces in Europe. Late today, the president holding a secure video call with European leaders. It lasted one hour, 20 minutes. The president a short time ago calling it a very good meeting with total unanimity with all of the European leaders. The White House tonight saying the leaders discussed preparations to impose, quote, massive consequences and severe economic costs if Russia moves. Amid concern over a possible Russian invasion, the U.S. State Department now ordering the families of all American personnel at the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine to leave the country. More than 100,000 Russian troops are now stationed along the border with Ukraine, some of those Russian troops taking part in joint military operations in Belarus. Here in the U.S. tonight, airmen at Travis Air Force Base in California and Dover Air Force Base in Delaware loading up military and weaponry to help Ukraine. And what the Ukrainian president just said about moves by the U.S. to get families of U.S. Embassy personnel out of that country, he called the move premature, urging calm. Our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raditz, leading us off tonight. With more Russian troops massing on Ukraine's border, Navy vessels in the Baltic seas, and Russian fighter jets heading to Belarus, Ukraine's neighbor to the north, the Pentagon tonight placing 8,500 U.S. troops on heightened alert for possible rapid deployment to back NATO allies in Eastern Europe and the Baltics. The United States has taken steps to heighten the readiness of its forces at home and abroad so that they are prepared to respond to a range of contingencies, including support to the NATO response force if it is activated. The president talking with European leaders on a secure video call late this afternoon. I had a very, very, very good meeting total unanimity with all the European leaders. That meeting followed one with his national security team at Camp David over the weekend. Biden could have deployed those troops to NATO immediately, but stopped short of that. I want to reinforce that as of now, the decision has been made to put these units on higher alert and higher alert only. No decisions have been made to deploy any forces from the United States at this time. The U.S. troops, which would be part of that NATO force, would include ground combat units, reconnaissance, and aviation forces. We joined U.S. fighter pilots on a NATO exercise when Russia was building up forces in the Baltics after it annexed Crimea from Ukraine. We're flying over Estonia now, but just over to the east, to the right, is Russia. We heard Russian pilots warn the Americans in 2016 not to cross the border. NATO saying its show of force was a critical deterrent. But now, with more than 100,000 Russian troops on Ukraine's border, the possibility of war seems greater than ever. And while the U.S. has ruled out sending troops into Ukraine itself, the U.S. is shipping hundreds of thousands of pounds of ammunition and lethal aid to Ukraine and evacuating some diplomatic personnel and families, saying an invasion could occur at any time. But Ukraine's president tonight said the embassy departures were unnecessary and premature and is urging people to remain calm. And Martha Raddatz with us tonight. And Martha, we heard there in your reporting that the president could have deployed the 8,500 troops immediately, but obviously he's chosen not to do that, at least right now. And we know U.S. authorities believe the potential of having more NATO forces brought into Eastern Europe is what makes Putin most uncomfortable. This would appear to be part of their ongoing strategy to warn that this could, in fact, be coming. It is, David. They want to pressure Putin but not provoke him or give him a reason to invade because despite putting these troops on heightened alert, the White House said today that President Biden and the European leaders are still hoping for a diplomatic resolution. David. All right, Martha Raddatz leading us off tonight. Martha, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.